What's up guys and welcome back to another video. This week we're building on all the other videos that I've been making about Resolve and we're talking about color manage versus not color manage workflows. We're gonna cover when to use each one so you know when to use the right tool for the job. Stay tuned because I'll also throw in a quick word about everyone's favorite subject, LUTs. Let's roll the intro. Right before we jump into this topic though, I just wanna say thank you so much for all of the support recently. We're almost at 200 subscribers, which is really amazing. That being said, if you're new here or you've been here since the beginning, welcome. New videos are being uploaded every Mondays and Wednesdays. I cover filmmaking tutorial, product reviews, and so much more. So if you're not already subscribed, be sure to hit the subscribe button, which helps me out immensely, and be sure to ring the bell too so that you don't miss any new videos. With that, let's jump into this week's topic. Okay, so here we are in Resolve, but before we get started, let's lay down the groundwork so you know what I'm talking about as we move through. So let's start with color gamut. Here, this chart shows you the different color spaces or gamuts. We have everything from Rec. 709, which is a standardized color gamut for broadcast, so that'll be your television, etc. Then you have P3 for things like, I think Netflix uses that for some deliverables, and ASUS, which has been the Hollywood standard for projection, all the way to the outside where you have the new DaVinci wide gamut. Now this is great because in many ways it standardizes the transform, and as you can see it encompasses all the other deliverable gamuts as well, so it's definitely future proof. Now that doesn't mean that you can see all of the colors that are represented, but it allows you more flexibility in grading the image and ensures your working or your timeline gamut gives you the maximum amount of flexibility. Then when you output, you can output to Rec. 709 for example. This of course being a graph of all of the, it's a visual representation of all the colors that you can perceive. So the good thing about working in a color space and using these settings is that the conversions are done with math instead of just a simple LUT uh, or lookup table, which is much more limited in its range and flexibility. All right, so one of the things I actually wanna go through and cover is color grading and how I go through and color grade my clips and ex different examples. And let me tell you, it doesn't have to be that complicated. It's not that hard and you can pull off some pretty incredible looks without relying on LUTs that likely won't do what you want them to do to your image. LUTs are not a one size fits all solution and sometimes they actually make your image look a lot worse. Real quick, for those of you that don't know what a LUT is, it's essentially a lookup table that your color grading software can use to convert and map out your colors, for example. You've probably seen a lot of people selling or talking about LUTs and really simplified, a LUT takes an input and says map it to this output. In this case, it includes our color information. Okay, so I think this illustrates the point and shows the transform pretty well. If we go to our project settings and choose SDR Rec. 709 and output Rec. 709, we're working in a Rec. 709 environment. Now you can see I have a red raw image here, but it's maxed out if we look at the color warper, for example. Essentially, there's nowhere else to push or pull this image. Now let's go back and choose wide gamut. Good thing here is that you can see in the description this is great for SDR and HDR deliverables, so you don't have to just be working in an HDR or RAW workflow for this to work. But keep your eye on the color warper here when I hit save. By the way, if you want more info on how to set up your project settings and what all this stuff means, I have another video that I'll link up in the corner in the cards talking all about setting up your projects in Resolve. So just making that change, look at how much more push and pull you have with the image. Now these settings can be done on a clip by clip basis with something called Color Space Transform. This is an OpenFX effect you can add to your node and it largely does the same thing as doing it in the project settings. One thing that I really love about Color Space Transform is once you start getting more advanced into it, you can actually play with luminance and saturation mapping, which is really useful for highlight roll off and different things. So practically, what does this mean? Well, if you know what camera you're working with and your workflow supports it, I highly recommend using the color managed workflow. That's found in project settings. You'll have to pick your correct settings, but that way Resolve handles the transform for you. There's no sense in dealing with individual clip by clip transforms when Resolve makes it so easy from the beginning. Now, when you're delivering, quick tip, Resolve recommends this as well, but you usually want to start with the widest and best format deliverables first and then work your way down to the smallest. So if you have 
to deliver a bunch of different formats, you'll probably want to start with like P3, for example, and then work your way down to Rec. 709. Your output will be determined by your client, which will probably have a list of deliverables they need from this project. So you can make sure you're checking them all off when you actually export. All right, so last two things I'll leave you with. First of all, if your clips have been transcoded to ProRes, for example, you're gonna have to ask your editor or DP what camera and settings they were working with if you don't know. Resolve won't be able to automatically convert this footage. Once you have that information though, you can right click on the clip, however, and go to input color space and then just select the camera and the gamut that you're working with. I have this second clip here, which is the same clip, but all I did was transcode the RAW to ProRes 42 HQ. As you can see, it's just showing as a flat image with no color space adjustments because it's been transcoded so Resolve doesn't have the metadata to convert it. If I right click on it though and change it from Rec. 709 Gamma 24 to Red Wide Log 3G10, the image instantly opens up and we actually have a very similar image to the first raw clip, which has been transformed by Resolve. This right here is a great looking grade already. We can obviously push this a lot further and give it a look, but if I'm looking for something quick, doing the base transform and then just messing around a little bit with my primaries and luminance can get me like 90 to 95% of the way there for something quick. Second of all, sometimes you'll have clips that are different or don't fit the color managed workflow. For example, you can have drone clips or footage from another camera. What you can do there is just right click on that particular clip and just go to input color space and just select bypass. That way you can work with the clip as if you were in a non-color managed space and proceed to shot match and do all of those things. All right, and that's it. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you learned something and you got a deeper understanding of color managed workflows and how you can use uh, color space transform better as well. Stick around because I'll actually be talking about how to get the film look next week using some tips and tricks, uh, including working with Color Space Transform, so you don't want to miss that one. Now make sure you're subscribed if you learned something or you found this video informative. Hit that like button as well. Leave a comment down below and don't forget to share this video with someone. And until next time, make sure you get out there and create something. La de vedere.